Case of article dated February 22, 2009. Rising crime gives you recessions next to federal. You need not fear crime nor become a victim of it. Today I'll discuss non lethal means of self defense. 25 years in the military and studying various martial arts has given me a lot of experience in self defense and avoiding becoming a victim of violent crime. The main points are first, your mental attitude is your most important part of self defense. Secondly, We'll talk about pepper sprays, their ingredients, uses, and precautions. And thirdly, we'll talk about stun guns and tasers, differences between the two, their effects, their uses, and precautions. The most important part of self-defense is your mental attitude and being prepared to protect yourself. You're the only person who will always be there for your protection. It's impossible for the police to be everywhere at all times. And even if you can get a hold of a cop, response times can be anywhere from five minutes to who knows how long. Be aware of your surroundings and for things out of the ordinary. Criminals look for victims who avoid eye contact or are not aware of their surroundings. If something seems off or you sense danger, get out of the area as fast as you can. Avoiding becoming a victim and or seeing danger and beating feet out of the area is always the best policy. There are also various martial arts and self-defense classes available. You can do an internet search or look in the phone book for contact women's advocacy groups for information, or you can ask around and get to know friends and classmates with training and get their advice. Now, if you do find yourself that you can't avoid the situation and need something for protection, pepper spray is a very effective item. Pepper spray is made from oleoresin capsaicin, which is an oily extract of pepper plants of the genus capsaicin. It is used as a spice in salsa, <coughs> curries, and hot sauces, as a pharmacologic agent in topical anesthetics and analgesic creams, and as a principal active ingredient in OC spray or pepper spray. It's used by police and others as an anti-personnel agent. The OC extract consists of a complex mixture of fat-soluble phenols known as capsaicinoids, capsaicin, and dihydrocapsaicin. The most potent homologs make up 80 to 90 percent of the total. Capsaicinoid content determines the hotness of the extract. The relative hotness is measured in Scoville units, which is the greatest dilution of pepper extract that can be detected by the human tongue. Capsaicinoid content of extracts used in pepper sprays varies widely among manufacturers, from 1.2% to 12.6%. Since the concentration in pepper sprays also varies 5 to 15%, the potential risks associated with the capsaicinoid exposure may vary by as much as 30-fold among different brands of OC sprays. According to an article by Ross Bainbridge in EZ Articles, How to Protect Yourself with Pepper Spray. In order to maximize pepper spray's protective capabilities, anyone who owns pepper spray should take pepper spray training from an expert. This pays off in knowing the effects and what exactly you should carry with you for protection. Used properly, pepper sprays are effective against a variety of threats, both two legged and four. Used primarily against animals, use of a large bear size spray, which is this is recommended. One of the best for self-protection is one made by the Swiss and sold by Kimber called the Guardian Angel. It shoots out a high-pressure stream and has two shots of spray that shoot up to 30 feet, so you can definitely keep your attackers away from you. The main way of using pepper sprays is to pop the safety off. This is a different kind. Most of them are built like this. You pop the safety caps off, you spray your attackers, or animal, whatever it is that's attacking you in the face, and you keep spraying them until they either stop trying to attack you or you run out of pepper spray. But I guarantee you, most of the time, you stop before you do. The effects of skin from OC spray causes tingling, intense burning pain, swelling, redness, and occasionally blistering. Like other airway irritants, aerosolized capsaicin stimulates the human cough reflex via sensory nerve endings. Eye symptoms associated with it include redness, swelling, severe burning, pain, stinging, eye inflammation, tearing, and involuntary or reflex closing of the eyelids. With acute exposure, however, there is rapid onset of constitutional symptoms which can include nausea, fear, and disorientation. Now, some precautions when using pepper sprays. Without proper training, pepper sprays, like any weapon, can be more dangerous to you than they are to the person you're trying to use them against, because they can take them away from you if you don't know what you're doing. In windy conditions or small spaces, you run the risk of spray going back on you. High doses can produce adverse cardiac, respiratory, and neurological effects, including arrhythmias and sudden deaths. They have had people at place of use these on that have died. Now, another 
type of personal defense item is stun guns and tasers. <coughs> they are effective non-lethal self-defense devices, and the main difference between stun guns and tasers is that tasers like this, they shoot at a distance. Stun guns like this one are close contact items. Law enforcement agencies have special tasers that they have a specially modified Mossberg shotgun that all it shoots is taser rounds are about this big and they can shoot out up to 50 feet. Effects and uses of them, they both work off a high voltage, low amperage, up to 300,000 volts and only about 3 milliamps. Over 10 milliamps can cause a human being to die. So they keep them below three. What this does is cause the muscles in your extremities to spasm and or continually contract and release, which basically burns up all the energy and they do incapacitate wherever you shoot with. Precautions in using these devices. Most tasers are one-shot devices. They shoot out barbs and that's one shot is all you get. Stun guns, they have multiple shots, but they're up close to personal. And the one thing about them, and this has been found in most police studies, is they're only about 65 to 70% effective. And if a person's on drugs, alcohol, or a crazy psychotic, the chances are they will not work. That's where pepper spray is a better idea. Now in conclusion, I hope by informing you on mental attitude, pepper spray, stun guns, and tasers, I hope you've learned a little bit about self-defense and have a better understanding of what you can do to protect yourself while knowing you need not be a victim of violent crime.